Hey there. Since I seem to be posting uh, the how-to videos on Monday, I figured, well, it's Monday, so let's continue the way we've been going. If you didn't watch the uh, Kasaki Nibs video, I'll let you know where we're starting here. I asked everybody in that video to practice basically stub nib grinding while leaving the tips on. So we're going to talk about two layer forward mounted like this. I call it the Kasaki grind uh, or Kasaki nib rather. And uh, what you need to know with the bottom nib, which is where your lockup really happens, that top bump needs to go away. With the top nib, that bump on the bottom needs to go away. Why? Otherwise they don't fit up against each other. You end up with that gap. Now, you could leave it that way. But when you section out the top nib, which is kind of what I want to discuss today, it makes the welding a little weirder. And the nib not quite, in my opinion, this is an Imho, in my opinion, not so neat looking. Um, so I want to grind these down, slice the top one. I'd been talking in the tool video about this particular kind of disc. It's a 0 0.006 inch wide uh, silicon carbide. It's very uh, fragile. If you buy them by the 50, they're about a buck a piece plus shipping. So it kind of sucks to me who's got a Scottish background and a bit of a penny pincher sometimes. It sucks when you break these because that's a dollar. <laughs> okay. So just to speed things up, I'm going to do the grinding with my Fordham and uh, this aluminum oxide wheel just because I don't want to have to subject you to a lot of scritching noises using a diamond one. I'll just subject you to grinding noises instead. How's that? So I decided and marked this one before the video. I don't usually mark them. I do it freehand. Um, that this is going to be the top of the two nibs. So first thing I want to do is take off that guy. So I'm going to try and do it while talking to you and wearing an optivizer because you really ought to have some kind of, you know, vision assistance. Support the nib tines with your finger or do this in a feed because otherwise the tines are going to move independently with the force of the grinder and that can be a bit of a pain because you have to go back and adjust a lot of things. There we go. So let's do it with a feed. Check it. Make sure the tines are lined up. It's a Jinhao nib. They probably aren't and they weren't. Um, okay, that's better. So you do need to make sure that the tines are starting with a decent lineup. Otherwise, you're just going to be a pain in the ass. So, and they, see, they came misaligned again. So support them with your finger anyway. Almost.
Okay, that'll do for the purposes of explanation. So you can't see it. These are, yeah, pretty decently lopped off. If you want to be a little more precise and sure of what uh, things look like, grab a diamond stone, have some of them fall over because I got a messy bench. And check the flatness the hard way. You're almost always going to have some kind of, of misalignment down at the tip of the nib. Just expect it. All right, I'm happier with that. I'm gonna leave that right there because it might be useful. So, bottom, top. So, flatten out this side. That one, okay. That's a pretty decent flat. So you can check some of the fit up ahead of time just by gently squashing them down once you get them in the proper position. Okay. This is also where you determine what the angle is which determines how much line variation you're going to get on your horizontal. When you grind it, remember, part of what you're doing is taking off the tipping material. You can't put that back on. So make sure you've got things pretty much where you want them as far as this angle goes. Okay, so top nib. Sometimes if you're doing more than two layers, you really want to keep track. So this is the bottom one. I know it is because it's in a feed. So we got that. Get that out of the way. Check the cutting disc. Be very, very careful. Because like I've said, there are Really, really fragile. Really great. Don't get me wrong. That's part of why I buy them is they're like little metal razor blades for things like nibs. So, like I said, I marked this earlier, which I don't normally do with a micrometer because, hey, soft metal, harder metal. Just... You kind of want to split the difference in here because your angle goes back from here past the nib hole. You can do straight cuts, you can do angled ones, you can do combo platters. This is where personal aesthetics comes in. I'm just gonna do something basic to keep it basic, right? All right. Now, this cuts better when it's closer to perpendicular. So there's my line. Oh, by the way, this cuts you just as easily as it cuts this. The fun part about it, it's like a paper cut. You don't really notice it until there's either blood or you've got something that's stinging. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. 
see, I can already tell my angles are off, so I'm going to have to go back and either recut this side, which, because not much has been done here, is easy to do right now, but would be a complete snot to do later. So let's do that. Okay, so this is fantastic because we have a learning moment. See what that cut is? This is what's known as an oh shit moment. When you're dealing with expensive nibs, you want to limit your oh shit moments. But again, because not much cutting has been done, I can go back and try and alter the other angle. It just means that this upper section is going to be shorter. That's not necessarily bad, it's just a thing. All right, that, that's workable. This side can get filed down, that's fine. All right, I can deal with that. So let's go back and finish the cuts. And there you go. Do yourself a favor. Don't use this for grinding anything because if you put too much pressure, it's gonna shatter and that's no fun. So since I've got you here, let me take this out and put it someplace safe where it's less likely to break by accident. Like right over there. I mentioned in the uh, tools video, I love fret files and uh, fishhook files. Okay, visually, it's easy to tell that this side is wider than this side. So what I want to do is take that down. And if I can maintain the angle of the cut, because it was nice and even, well, it's really not bad. Okay, not bad at all, really. Take down this side just a little bit towards the point. Even it up a little bit more because it's slightly off. I mean, for the purposes of education, slightly off is fine, but, you know, the closer we can get it to perfect, or close to perfect, the better, right? This is where being fiddly and fastidious comes in handy. Okay, that's about what I want. So next week, we'll weld this little guy. If I can put these in a place where I uh, will find them again. Like, oh, maybe in this little Pacific Abrasives box that's got other things floating around it, but that's okay. We'll find it. If not, you can laugh at me later. So. Fundamentals of sectioning, some dust. So, keep working on shaving off the humps of the tipping material. That also, for later, if you want to go into just grinding, is great. It sets you on the way to cursives, italics, 
and uh, a bunch of other little things that you might design on your own. So thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.